with Professor Larissa Schippel. Is that well pronounced? Well pronounced. Okay. So, Larissa, what's your job here? In Vienna? Well, in Vienna, I'm officially the professor for transcultural communication. Mm -hmm. And uh, I direct this center for translation studies. Okay, this huge center for translation studies. Yes, we have the range of uh, faculty. Right. It's not so we much institutions which a are a couple of faculty. thousand of students. Three thousand. Three thousand. Yeah. Okay, and a very big building. Yeah. <laughs> okay. and a very nice building. All right. <laughs> and so you're in charge. Yeah. It is. Okay. And how long have you been here? I'm here since uh, 2010. Okay, so that's that's five years. Or so. Five years. And mm -hmm. how's it going? Mm, I came from Berlin. Right. And it's a it's a change. It's a ch okay. It's a change. To be but you've there. been changing things here, uh, little by little, is it? Do you see it? So it, uh, it's a pleasure. I hear, uh, hearing I hear good <laughs> reports, <laughs> and I see lots of activity. Yeah, uh, and plans for 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 changing the, the masters. The curriculum, yeah. The curriculum. It was a a, a heavy uh, a heavy um, task. Okay. Okay. Um, because, well, we have been evaluated in mm -hmm. twenty eleven. Mm -hmm. By um, Theo Hermanns, um, Annelore Lianke, and um, Susan Wright. Mm -hmm. And one of the critical points was that our curri master's curriculum, uh, oh, we have two, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, are too rigid. Students have no change. Okay. You must just decide. You must des decide. Or you will run the uh, master yeah. for interpreting or for uh, translation. And therefore, a lot of students uh, do both of them. Yes. One after another. Because they're another. not sure. So, mm -hmm. yes. Exactly. And um, mostly these students who work with uh, smaller languages, Bosnian, Croatian, mm. Serbian, or even Polish. Or yes, Czech, you have a, a huge range of languages. Here, 14 actually. languages, yes, yes. yeah, yes. Uh, including Chinese mm -hmm. and Japanese. Mm -hmm. And uh, even they uh, who, works with, who work with uh, languages which are not the biggest in mm -hmm. the world, they are not sure what okay. kind of, of work they will have. Okay. They will come to. So basically you're bringing those together to together give more options to yeah. the students. Yeah, yeah. yeah that makes um, sense. It will be. Uh, it will have uh, this new curriculum. It's not decided yet. Um, next month we will be an academic assignment with it, and then students will have the possibility to opt for or translation for special purposes, mm -hmm. literary translation, uh, conference interpreting, and how it is. Uh, how we. Say uh, dialect interpreting. Okay, good, good. And they can change. They have uh, options uh, within. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, I and here so. I've been meeting uh, some wonderful doctoral students and, and, and yeah. research assistants. I mean, a lot of research is being done here, mm -hmm. in addition to all the training yeah. that's being carried on. Yeah. And, and part of that is your your right. concerns mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Right? Because, you know, uh, Vienna um, Center or Institute uh, of Translation Studies has a, a history um, which is not the same as in other European countries. Mm -hmm. uh, Austrian institutes came from practical institutes. Mm -hmm. They were Dolmetscher Institute. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they, are, they haven't, in the past, they haven't any research. Okay. It is only starting in the 70s, 80s, mm -hmm. when there were, was implemented in Graz, in Vienna, and then in Innsbruck, um, some professorships. Okay. Erich okay. Prunsch, for example, right. is one of the first. Right. And we did try to develop a research part in, the, in, in our institutions. 
Yeah, the, the, the quality is, and the number of, of research projects that it's have quite been big, based yeah. here. Well, it's uh, mostly Gerd Boudin, who okay. is very successful in uh, getting projects, okay. European projects, but also Austrian projects. But we try to do our okay. best <laughs> to develop this part of... of Can we go team. back to when you were in, the mid, in your mid-twenties? Um, About the age of a doctoral student beginning yeah. up, perhaps. Where, where were you and what were you doing? Well, I, I had luck. It was uh, a lucky uh, um, consolation for me after um, finishing my, my studies. In which country? Berlin University, right. Humboldt University. Good. Okay. In GDR, if Good. you want a country. Right. Uh, I get a possibility to, to uh, have an assistant job mm -hmm. in university. Well, I, I did uh, translation studies. I'm an interpreter and translator. Mm -hmm. It was Sprachmittler and the GDR. Good. Both of them. Yes. And uh, if you ask me, uh, I was six or eight, what do you want to become? I said, I will become an interpreter. Good. And, and I did. did it. And you did. Great. Yeah. And uh, from the first uh, year of my studies, I interpreted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm all what was possible. Yes. <laughs> and it was great pleasure. It was my job. Good. And uh, these studies were very linguistic studies. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't exist. Uh, in Leipzig, yes, in Berlin, no. Uh, translation studies, mm -hmm. mid of 70s. Mm -hmm. And translation studies in Leipzig, I found them boring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it wasn't my field. <laughs> Yeah. Then I started in linguistics. Because you were a practitioner then? Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. You didn't yeah. like all the theory? This kind of... No, uh, it was not, not an uh, anti-position against uh, research mm -hmm. or um, theories at all, but this kind of theory, I, it didn't talk to well, me. It was very abstract. Yeah. And, and very Marxist at that period. Yeah. Well, um, well... Okay, well... <laughs> So no, I was, like I like Kada very much. Yeah, He's one of my great heroes, and he was a practitioner. Yeah, which I right. find impressive uh, yeah, as well to, to, right. to combine the two. Okay, okay. but <laughs> Kada, I didn't, I didn't catch. Okay, I can but understand. Yeager, that. I can understand. Uh, that. And the followers yes, of yes. Kada, uh, it was all Greek for me. Okay, right. And therefore, I did linguistics. Mm -hmm. I found it exciting. My professor was a very good linguist. Very Mm -hmm. Romance languages. Um, I think he knew all all of them. <laughs> what, what were your languages then? Uh, French language? and Romanian. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. And I did a PhD thesis on Romanian syntax. Mm -hmm. Well, I started in seventy three and I finished it in eighty three. Don't tell anybody that. <laughs> <laughs> but there were two okay. children. <laughs> And All right. <laughs> okay, that's legitimate. That's that's the best excuse in the world. <laughs> and you were interpreting as well, isn't yeah, it? Right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Parallel. So, uh, so it's possible to do three possible. things at the same time. Well, uh, today I'm not sure. All no, right. Okay. It was possible. It was possible. Okay. Yeah. And difficult, I should imagine. No. Well, okay. No. But you enjoyed I, the linguistics there. I enjoyed them. Pleasure, right? I did Chomsky, I did natural syntax, okay. um, all hardcore linguistics, okay. and I enjoyed it. Uh, but then I started to to have a look on cultural studies, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed, enjoyed it even more. Mm -hmm. And the, so I, in fact, I came, actually I came from linguistics over cultural studies back to translation okay. studies. So what um, kind of cultural studies? It, it's a very um, diffuse term these days. After, after the PhD thesis, oh, starting earlier actually, I, I started to, to do some, some research in oral uh, communication. Mm -hmm. And you can't do oral communication, you can't um, do research in oral communication without any ethnography uh, and, and ethno methodological uh, okay. basis, okay. basics. And therefore, I came from Garfinkel and Sachs and uh, then over um, 
Clifford Geertz, and so on. Okay, good. And this was what I, what I find ex found exciting. Mm -hmm. And, well, over these uh, studies of orality, McLuhan uh, was the the entrance to media. Okay. Uh, media research. Yes, I did a, a monography about. Um, cultural change uh, discussed, debated in television in, after 89 mm. in Romania. But it's not, it's, the material is Romanian material, okay. but the, the questions are more general. And, um, and from there, I come back to the. Were you always in Berlin? Berlin? Huh? Always in Berlin. Okay, yeah. so it's, it's an intellectual voyage. Yeah. That you, that yeah. you went on. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you were working at the same time, or you were then an academic, or when you were doing the work no, of the cultural studies? No, I was. was uh, till 2000, mm. I worked at the uh, Department for, for, of Romance Linguistics and uh, okay. of Ro um, Romance Languages and Literatures. Romance okay. Linguistics. Uh, and, and, and there was, there's not University. translation studies as such in No, in we. Berlin okay. had. Well, after uh, eighty nine, we had uh, strong discussions mm -hmm. about implementing translation studies, mm -hmm. and uh, the conservatists won. Their Conservative won. means no. modern languages in the yeah. classical sense. Yeah, okay. yeah. Zalewski was there, surely. Zalewski, yeah. 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 But uh, Zalewski, but uh, she couldn't remain at uh, home. Really? Yeah. Okay. Therefore, she went to, to Magdeburg. To Magdeburg, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, were you frustrated then if you wanted to do cultural things and translation studies in a, in a modern language department, or was that, that fine? It was possible you know, to do work. There was a, a quite stupid situation. We had all the time students for translation studies, mm. uh, but we had no, no professorship. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I could do in, the, in teaching. What I wanted. Okay, so you were doing uh, it, but, mm -hmm. but not recognized yeah. for it. Okay. Yes, okay. So, twenty in two thousand eight. Well, then I um, leave the uh, left the university. Mm -hmm. uh, worked as a freelancer. Oh, really? Yeah. Why? Uh, my uh, contract. Good. Okay, finished. that's a very good reason. Yeah. And I worked as freelancer. It wasn't uh, easy, mm -hmm. of course. Starting, well, I didn't. I didn't uh, expect it really. We had uh, two. Uh, we had applied for two projects, and we are quite sure that we get okay. minimum one. Okay. It wasn't the case. But freelancing? Do you mean uh, interpreting or translating? Translating. As well? okay. Translating and teaching. Okay. Mm. Well, we're just finding that it's people say that academics don't know the practice. Mm -hmm. We find that mo most of us do the practice. I have done lots of Absolutely. it. Yeah. Each year, one book I translate. Oh, really? Well, okay, sure. Okay. That's more than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I'm a translator. Good. And I like it. Good. And I work with, uh, for example, with Memo Q. Right. Um, and it's I like it Good. to, to yes. work with uh, the software. And I'm a very critical, uh, I have a very critical view on working with, in the same time, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, these tools. Okay. I think it's one of the themes we have to discuss about uh, in translation studies. Yes. What indeed. does it with languages, for example? Yeah. What makes it? What about the research that's needed? I mean, you have doctoral research students here, they're doing some great topics. Uh, What's your particular research field or interest at the moment? Uh, it's, on the one hand, uh, history. No? History of translation. Okay. Oh, um, with the East-West yeah. thing. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, of course. Uh, because, you know, coming from, from linguistics, uh, if you want to know something about history of the language, you go to the library and you have hundreds mm -hmm. of books. If you want to know something about 
the history of translation in a certain uh, space. Where do you go? To philologists. What do you find? You find the history of a text. You find the history of, of an author. But where do you have, could you have a look? What, what period, what, what mm -hmm. happened in, in, a, in a certain period, in a certain space? There is, I think we have, we need a, a systematic yes. uh, research in, in uh, translation history. Okay, so the traditional literary histories leave out translators. They don't consider them. It's the, the one thing. Yeah. The other thing, literary translation is mostly um, belletristic. Bell yes, uh, yeah. Les Beaux-Arts. Yeah. Uh, and what happened in the history of translations for special purposes. There are such uh, exciting, amazing uh, areas about them. We know quite nothing. For example, all the, these treaties after, after wars in history. There must have been in several languages. Mm -hmm. Of course. What, what, do we, what do we know? What are we, you are the I don't know, were you the main organizer or the mm. force behind this conference on East-West yeah. in translation yeah. studies? Of course, um, my idea. I, I found that fascinating. Mm. I mean, it's something we really need, and our ignorance, mm -hmm. me coming from the West, yeah. of what has been done eastwards yeah. is, is another area of history we have to work on, surely. Yes, uh, this is uh, one thing, history of translations, history of trans translation, but the other thing is history of our discipline. No? Mm -hmm. we, are, we used to, to start in the 70s, mm -hmm. or with Carter, or with Holmes, or with others, but after Second World War. What, what, are, what criteria do we have to separate translation mm -hmm. studies from pre- uh, scientific uh, ages. Mm -hmm. Why there? Why in the seventies? Why not in the fifties with sure. Fyodorov? No, why yes, even yes. Uh, earlier? Yes, yes. <coughs> and it seems necessary to do it. We used to 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 talk about our discipline as a young discipline. Is it really a young and? If it is true, why we have such a young discipline for a topic which is so old, yes, it needs yes. an explication, yes. if it is really so. Yes. Yes. I'm not sure. It could be it's a Western discourse that doesn't want to recognize that it, there are other cultures that have developed other yeah. kinds of discourse on the same topic. But in the same time, uh, you wrote a book about the school of Toledo. Mm -hmm. uh, all these translators, they weren't not only translators. Translators job, uh, all over the time did more than translate. Yes, of course. They reflected about their translation, about their doings. Uh, what do we know? Uh, yeah, little by little, we little by little, up a but uh, there's a necessity okay. to to do much more. I mm. think. Are there other areas you would recommend to beginning doctoral students? Areas yeah. in which you think research is yeah. needed. We started one. Uh, uh -huh. um, you know, perhaps uh, in December of last year we did. I think my overview the first conference on translation in, in the third uh, Reich. Mm -hmm. Yes. Develop. Yes. And I hope so that there will be a kind of network uh, of those scholars mm -hmm. who are occupied with uh, this. It's a very difficult research because you have. It's um, difficult to find the materials because we have uh, a lot of material about this time, mm. about, uh, for example. Uh, one of my uh, master students started a uh, master thesis about um, interpreting in the ghetto, mm -hmm. in the ghetto of Varsovia. 
What do you have? Uh, mem mem memoirs. memoirs, yes. And you have to, to read mo many, many, many yeah. books, many memoirs, mem and much material uh, to find one sentence, yes. to find uh, a little bit yes. what you can use as a as a starting point, as a guideline for looking uh, yeah. further and further. It's very difficult, and even for, for students, master students, but the same for PhD students, you need time for yes. doing this. And Perhaps also you have, have no to work time. with historians of course. Who, who, who work with these documents looking for other things. Of course. That they can of course. Help us of course. Okay. And uh, I think if we, if we talk about ethics and translation, we have to know what happened in this time, in this very difficult, very hard time, where, well, uh, it's easy to, to, to decide, oh, they were opportunists, they um, worked for the regime, and yes. so on. Mm. But they had to live, even uh, in this time, for 20 years. And therefore, I think we, we talking about ethics, we have to know how people uh, managed it yes. in, in real difficult okay. times. Okay. And there will be, perhaps, possibly, there will be a wide range of uh, behaviors. And I think we have to know them. Good. Okay, that's that's historical research. Are there other yeah. areas that we should yeah. be looking at? <laughs> well, uh, doing he here uh, transcultural communication and mm -hmm. explaining to students what is it yes. and what means it, what does it mean in comparison with intercultural studies mm. or what is multiculturalism. Uh, I try to, to show and to find <laughs> Uh, in in the in a, uh, in an interdiscursive way that I'm a very very mm -hmm. uh, doing research on the base of Foucault and uh, the construction of knowledge uh, how it is done in, in sociology. Mm -hmm. Um, how is constructed our knowledge and how translation or interpreting is um, a part of these constructions of our knowledge. And therefore I, I had a look when we, when Erich Punsch was in his last uh, colloquium for the, uh, when he get, uh, can retire, mm -hmm. I did a study about the beginning of an, of a discourse. Uh, we always discourse in sense of, of Foucault, mm -hmm. not in sense yes. of text. Yes. Um, we all used to to look at discourse as uh, something which is uh, always pre-existent, mm -hmm. and our texts have to behave uh, in in, uh, in this inter in, in, in this um, discursive uh, situation. And I tried to, to have a look what happens when a discourse gets started. Mm -hmm. And I took uh, Pettenkofer, this hygienist. hygienist. He has a first professorship in Germany for public hygiene. Okay. Hygienist. Hygienist, right. yeah. I, yeah. What happened then uh, when he um, started to... to uh, when makes it then in the uh, 60s of the 19th century? Was the 1860s? Is it? 1860s. All right, okay, so yeah. yes, yes. And it was so uh, amazing and so exciting yeah. for the community that um, medicines from different countries yeah. came to Munich to listen to Mr. Pettenkofer. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the problem of cholera. Mm -hmm. and growing towns and this was the start of the uh, public hygiene mm -hmm. uh, in Europe I think. Mm -hmm. Well, 
they came because they understood language, German language. They could listen to Pettenkofer because they knew mm -hmm. German. Then what they did, they returned at home and made their own lectures in their languages. Mm -hmm. ah, French, okay. uh, yeah. Russian, yeah. English and so on. Uh, it means at the beginning of a discourse we have a, a, a combination of um, multilingualism of these specialists, mm -hmm. of um, lingua franca communication, uh, German, German as a German lingua franca, as a lingua of franca science, yes, in, in science, yes. in philosophy till today, yes, yes. in history, you can't get, you can't become a historian if you don't know uh, German. Hmm? Said. <laughs> <laughs> and translation, yes. of course. Yes. The books of Pettenkofer are translated in other languages. Mm -hmm. And the, the starting point for me was uh, that I uh, read a book where was one sentence, uh, Max Pettenkofer was the god of Saratov. Saratov is a town in South Russia. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Why? Okay. <laughs> because one of the uh, these listeners in, in Munich uh, was a, a doctor from Saratov. All right. And he founded there a society on public hygiene mm -hmm. and um, distributed the new knowledge. Mm -hmm. And this I find very interesting to, to find out, to, res to make research, how these... Uh, different possibilities, lingua franca communication, uh, multilingualism and translation work together in a discursive way. How we yes. construct our knowledge, uh, not only by translation, but even also uh, by translation. And the role of translation in constructing knowledge is, I think, underestimated uh, in our societies. Absolutely. Professor Schuppel, thank you very much. Thank you. It was my pleasure.